Hello everyone and welcome to the class. This is David A. Cox with TechTalkAmerica.com and today I am very happy to introduce you all to an app that I started to use myself about three weeks ago and I've really kind of fallen in love with it if I'm being totally honest. Uh, it's called Fantastical 2. It is a alternative calendar app. It's available for the Mac, the iPhone, and the iPad. I'm going to give you little demos of it on all three devices today. Uh, one of the important things I need to say right up front is that you should be aware this is not a universal app, meaning it's not one of those deals where you buy it on one and you get it on all your other devices for free. With this, you have to buy a version for the Mac, you have to buy a version for the iPhone, and a version for the iPad. Uh, the versions for the iOS devices is significantly less expensive, but what I want to say is that good, intelligent business people out there tend to appreciate good, intelligent design. So uh, I myself have really fallen in love with it. I paid for it. I bought it. Um, I do recommend it. Uh, for any of you out there who are business people, you know, it's not terrible. It's not crazy money, but it is something, of course, that you can write off as a business expense. So let's just get into it. Here we go. So this is Fantastical 2. Okay, uh, this is the, of course, the Mac version. I'll show you the iPhone and iPad later on today. Um, it's a very, very clean design, and not everyone out there appreciates good UI uh, user interface. I I'm one of those people who who does appreciate that, and this is really well designed. So they've clearly got some pretty good people on their team. So here on the right-hand side, this part needs to be simple, and it should be, and it is. Uh, so that part looks pretty much identical to the calendar app that comes with your Mac. What really makes it special is this over here on the left-hand side. The fact that you have different ways that you can look at your schedule. So with this, you have a list view. What's nice is that when you scroll over here, notice that the date up here kind of scrolls with it. Okay, so very, very easy to uh, see how your schedule is all laid out here. Um, a couple other things I'll show you here. There, there's one important hotkey that I think is probably a good idea for you to memorize if you do decide to buy this command T goes to today so if you ever get kind of lost in your calendar or you accidentally scroll you know five years into the past command T brings you back to today when it comes to adding new events to your calendar it's pretty darn simple you can either double click on the date or if you like you can hit the little plus button up here at the top left corner and you can speak to it pretty intelligently so or pretty casually rather. So let's say I want to have dinner with Bobby today at 9 p.m. at Blackfish, my favorite restaurant in Truro, Massachusetts. If you're ever in the area, go there. When you're done putting in your entry, just hit the return key. It gives you that little whoosh sound effect, and there you go. Now, you'll notice I never actually told it what the address was. I told it the name of the location, uh, the name of the business, rather, and the general location, the town. Watch this. I double-click on it, and voila, we have a map here. And for those of you out there who despise Apple Maps, and I know there's a few of you, don't worry. You can actually switch it over to use Google Maps instead. If I need driving directions, one click, voila. We've got it there on Apple Maps. Very, very simple. Um, if you need to make any changes, you can add things like notes. There's this little arrow here, if you notice at the very bottom left corner, so I can add in invitees, I can add a URL or notes, whatever I want, put that in there. Um, Fantastical 2 does work with pretty much every service out there, so I don't want you to worry if you have been using a calendar up till now with, uh, let's say, Google, it will bring your calendar over. You just have to sign in. I'm going to, of course, show you how to do that. Same thing goes for iCloud or any of the other services out there that would already have your calendar info. Another thing you'll notice, if you look here at the very bottom left corner, it also has integration for reminders. So if you've been using reminders on the Mac, uh, the built-in one, whether it's on the Mac or your iPhone or iPad, whatever it may be, it will port those over here as well. They will sync. So let's say I, uh, let's just say, for example, I have Fantastical 2 on my Mac, but I don't have it on my iPhone. Uh, let's say I use Siri and I say, Siri, remind me to pick up milk when I go to the grocery store, something like that. Even if I don't have Fantastical 2 on my phone, it will still bring it over here into the Mac side because all of those accounts will continue to synchronize in the background. Let me show you a few other features here. Uh, sometimes when I need to reference my calendar or if I need to add something especially to my calendar, I might not necessarily be in my calendar at that very moment. So check this out. If you have it on your Mac, it actually goes into your little toolbar right up here. So with one click up here at the very top 
towards the right, I can go into my calendar right here and I can pull up all of the same information. I can create events. I can do it all right here from the menu bar without even having to have the program open at the time. It's a pretty cool feature. Uh, I want to go into, uh, give me one second here, I want to just get out of full screen mode for one moment. Uh, for those of you, by the way, who have upgraded your Mac to the latest operating system, which would be OS X El Capitan, uh, you should know that yes, this does now work with half screen mode, so you can do that if you want. Okay, uh, let's go into preferences and go over just a few minor little things here. So under the general uh, menu here, you can see you can have it automatically open at login. You can define what day your week starts and ends, what time of day your week, uh, your day rather, begins and ends. Uh, here under appearance, if you don't like this dark theme over here on the left-hand side, you can switch it over to light here at the bottom. Personally, I actually kind of like the dark in this case. Uh, here under accounts, this is where you can go to put in whatever account information you want. Don't bother ever emailing that address. It's fake. I use it just for these classes. Calendars, if you do have multiple calendars or you have multiple people in your family, yes, it will bring them all in. No problem. You can do that. Uh, alert preferences, so if you want the uh, time of every appointment to be maybe half an hour instead of one hour by default, you can change that. Under Advanced, this is where you can switch it away from Apple Maps to Google Maps. Call me crazy, I've actually had pretty good luck lately with Apple Maps, so for now, I'll roll the dice and keep it there. Then again, this isn't my real account on this computer anyway. And as far as update goes, yeah, I'd say it's probably pretty safe to keep it on auto update. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to switch over and kind of show you how it looks from the iPhone and iPad version. All right, folks, so this is what it looks like when you're using this app uh, on the iPad, at least in landscape mode. You can pull down this kind of top part here and make it look kind of like the traditional calendar, but personally, that's the reason why I didn't go with the traditional calendar is I like this view. Uh, if I switch it over to portrait mode, that's actually what I prefer. There you go. So you have still that, that great list view here. You kind of see what days have more activity than others. If you ever need to add uh, a date. You can use this little plus symbol up here at the very top right corner. Um, personally, I usually tend to prefer to use Siri more than anything. So I'll usually just say, hey Siri, add to my calendar whatever the name of the event would be, the date and time, and we're good to go. Um, but if you do want to add that, this is what it'll look like, just like that. So you can type in, of course, the name of whatever your event is. You can actually type in the time uh, and it'll add it to your calendar. I just personally tend to think that Siri is a little bit easier to use than having to type anything in. Uh, let's switch over to the iPhone so I can show you what that looks like. All right, folks, so this is what it looks like on the iPhone view. Once again, I love this layout. It's just very clean. It's very easy to navigate. Um, so let us know what you think. Leave us a comment in the section below. Uh, let us know if you, of course, bought the app. And we'll see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.